Hello, this is Pastor Kevin of Antioch United Methodist Church. Good to have you here. It is Thursday, March 9th, 2023. This is my message for Sunday, March 12th, 2023. A week from tomorrow, on March 17th, it will be St. Patrick's Day. I have my green tie on because this Sunday, March 12th, is the Sunday before St. Patrick's Day. Good to have you here. If you want to join us, we would love to have you in person or online live. We have services at 8.30 and 11 o'clock a.m. at 3614 North State Highway H in Springfield. If you are ever anywhere near Springfield, please join us on Sunday morning. We will make you feel warmly welcomed and you will be inspired by the music and the message at 8.30 and 11 o'clock a.m. Or you can join us on Facebook Live at facebook.com forward slash Antioch United Methodist Church, all one word, lowercase, no space. Do you have people in your family who are unkind to you? Not nice, rude. Are there people in your life who are just jerks, mean and hateful? Are there people at work who are impatient, don't do a good job, and just make work a drag for you? We all have to deal with people who make life difficult for us sometimes, hopefully not all the time. We all have to occasionally deal with the people who make our life or our work or our family gathering not so fun. Proverbs 15 verse 18 in the Passion Translation says, a touchy, hot-tempered person picks a fight. But the calm, patient person knows how to silence strife and quiet things down. You want to be calm and patient because you're a Christian. But some people just make your life difficult and get on your last nerve. And sometimes you wouldn't mind giving it right back to them. I mean, giving it right back to them. Am I right? Come on now. Let's get real. Sometimes, sometimes you wouldn't mind just sticking it to the jerk. Well, the message in this video is God will deal with the difficult people. God will deal with the difficult people in your life. God will deal with your enemies. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, in the NIV, the Apostle Paul said, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Live the Christian life. Live out their Christian faith. He's saying keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Keep your eyes on those who live right. Keep your eyes on those who are godly. Keep your focus at work on those who are good, decent, hardworking, make you laugh, make you smile. Keep your eyes on those people in your family who live the Christian life, who are Christ-like. Don't keep your eyes on those who are not Christ-like. Don't keep your eyes on those who are ungodly, who are jerks, who are rude, who are unkind. Keep your eyes off of them. Verse 18. Paul said, For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. They're all about feeding themselves. They're all about themselves, self-absorbed, narcissistic, and he says, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. They're not Christ-like. They're not good people. They may even be uh, church members in some church. They may even say that they are religious. But some people are just full of themselves, self-centered, all about themselves, 
self-obsessed, and they're always thinking about themselves and what they want and what they desire, what they yearn. Their God is their stomach, and the Apostle Paul tells us and assures us that their destiny eventually will be destruction. God will deal with the difficult people in your life. Those difficult people are going to get it one day, according to Scripture. If you have had people in your life who have made your life miserable, or who got on your last nerve, or who still get on your last nerve, if you have people in your life who have made your life terrible, they're going to get theirs. They're going to get what's coming to them, guaranteed. Anybody who has intended to hurt you is an enemy of the cross, an enemy of Christ, and their destiny is destruction unless they repent and get right with God. In the meantime, what do we do? The words of Jesus in Matthew 5, verses 43 through 45, New King James. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Meaning, when people criticize you, when they are hurtful, when they are rude, when they are belligerent and difficult, keep calm, be nice. Try to smile, be respectful, be your best self. Some of you may remember the story back in 2018 of the man who drove through the Chick-fil-A drive through to insult and put down the drive through window employee because he wanted to protest against Chick-fil-A's Christian beliefs. So he pulled through the drive through and he, he recorded himself on a smartphone, berating and insulting the drive through employee, insulting Chick-fil-A. Now she responded with kindness and courtesy and friendliness, never once arguing with him, never once saying anything mean or nasty or angry back at him. She may have wanted to, and her embarrassment was on her face because she told him she was uncomfortable being recorded. But she never got to his level. She never got nasty. She never got rude back to him. She gave him nothing but courtesy and respect. And he uploaded his video to his YouTube. Went to bed that night. The next day went to work as usual and realized that hundreds of people had called in and left vo voicemail messages angry about that video. That, that video had gone viral. And so many people had called into his work, his company, his medical supply company to complain about him because his face was on it. Long story short, he lost his job as CFO of that medical supply company. And there was so much sympathy for the Chick-fil-A drive through employee, and rightly so. I mentioned Philippians 3, 19, their destiny is destruction. Sometimes that destruction happens in this life. Not only, not just the next life, but this life. That man sowed the seeds of his own destruction. Matthew 23, verse 12, Christ said, For wh whoever exalts himself, full of himself, will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. God will deal with the difficult people in your life in due time. Matthew 12, verses 1 through 14, in the New Living Translation we see how Jesus dealt with difficult people. It says, At about that time, 
Jesus was walking through some grain fields on the Sabbath day, but the day of worship, the day of rest. His disciples were hungry, so they began breaking off some heads of grain and eating them. But some Pharisees saw them do it and protested, complained. Look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Now they were harvesting grain, but it was because of of hunger and not profit. Jesus said to them, haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God. He and his companions broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. And was God mad? No. God understands. Verse 5, And haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests on duty in the temple may work on the Sabbath? Well, I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple. And who is that? Jesus, the Son of God. He said, but you would not have condemned my innocent disciples if you knew the meaning of the scripture, which says, I want you to show mercy and not offer sacrifices. God cares about mercy over the sacrificial rules. God cares about the heart and compassion and somebody's hunger more than than the fine points of the law of Moses. Now, I like how Jesus didn't yell and scream right there in that chapter. He calmly quoted the Bible, explained himself calmly, and went back to his day doing his thing. And the names of those Pharisees are unknown, don't know. And and those guys are long forgotten by history. And the name of Jesus is the most famous name in all of history. His is the name that is above every other name. Those who were full of themselves that day in that scripture got humbled. Those who were humble got exalted throughout history. Speaking of history, Friday, March 17th, of course, is St. Patrick's Day. Again, have my tie, my leprechauns. St. Patrick's Day is about much more than parades and leprechauns. St. Patrick is famous for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was born in Britain, not Ireland. He wasn't even Irish. Born in Britain in the 5th century. At age 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and carried into slavery in Ireland. He spent six long, bleak years in Ireland as a herdsman. Patrick was not a believer in God at the time, but when he was living in captivity in Ireland, he began to seek God. He began to pray a whole lot. Six years after his capture, God spoke to Patrick in a dream, saying, your hungers are rewarded, meaning hunger for God. You are going home. Look, your ship is ready. And Patrick walked nearly 200 miles and then boarded a wedding ship and traveled back home to Britain and to his family. Eventually, Patrick was ordained a priest, then a bishop, and he he went back to Ireland as a missionary. God had called Patrick to literally love his enemies by preaching the gospel in the place, in the nation where he was a slave, in Ireland. The Irish of the 5th century were a very pagan, violent, barbaric people. Human sacrifice was commonplace. But Patrick's love for the Irish people eventually won them over. And he pretty much converted the entire country of Ireland to Christ. God dealt with his enemies, and Patrick was successful. 
So what about you? What about your life? Would the people who know you best describe you as a hothead, quick-tempered, easily angered, with a sharp tongue? Do you fight fire with fire with people, with your words? Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up the anger. Do you stir it up or do you calm it down? When a coworker is rude or disrespectful, when somebody says something unkind about you on Facebook, when a family member is nasty or someone just makes your day difficult, it's good to stand up for yourself, but don't fight fire with fire. 1 Peter 3 verse 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. What you give out comes back to you. What that jerk gives out to you will come back to him or her. So, if you give out a blessing, kindness, respect, courtesy, God will deal with the jerks and you will get the blessing. I want to have God's blessing. How about you? You don't get it by fighting back, by, by retaliating, by being nasty back to somebody who's nasty towards you. The proud and the arrogant, those who are full of themselves, will be humbled but the humble will be exalted by God. You do what God wants you to do. You be your best self. You, you resist the temptation to fight fire with fire. You stand up for yourself, but be kind, courteous, Christ-like, your best self, and you will have God's blessing. The jerk will not. Your enemy will not. People who make your life miserable will not have the blessing, but you will have God's blessing, guaranteed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give a like to this video. Subscribe to my channel. We'll be here, I'll be here, I should say, every Thursday or Friday to give you the pre-recorded version of my next Sunday's message. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.